Hi, my name is Bertrand Dirk, and today we'll be discussing about what migraines are. So, have you actually been diagnosed with migraine, or may think you suffer from migraine as opposed to headaches? Well, today we will go into greater detail to understand exactly what migraine is, so you have a clear understanding of all the symptoms, but also hopefully understanding what the cause of migraine is, and also the best treatment options to help alleviate, manage, treat, or combat migraine pain. Now, migraine, in general, is actually ranked the top three most prevalent disorder in the world in the top seventh highest causes of disability worldwide. And it is also actually one of the most prevalent health conditions in the world as it accounts for the sixth highest amount of days lost to disability globally. So it does have a huge impact on the world but also the individual as well. Now, people who experience migraine often describe pain usually on one side of the head, that is unilateral pain. So if you're suffering from migraine, pain is usually one-sided. It can switch from side to side, from left to right, but generally the pain is usually on one half of the body. Now, the sensation that is often felt is rated as a moderate to severe pain level. The pain is usually felt as a pulsating type pain or a throbbing type pain that just keeps on going on and on. Migraine sufferers also experience a range of other symptoms, not just pain. So you may also have nausea, like you feel sick in the stomach, nausea. You may vomit from it as well. You may also become very sensitive to bright lights. In this case, you may find that you may want to lock yourself up in a dark room. Also, you may find that sounds, um, you become very sensitive to sound and even smells as well. But not only that, you can have a lot of other symptoms as well, such as aura symptoms. Aura is basically where you have visual disturbances. Typically before an attack, you may have zigzaggy lines, colorful lines, and may, you may experience in the vision before you have an attack. But also, during an attack, you may have other visual disturbances, such as blurred vision, double vision, or even tunnel vision. A lot of our patients that we see often say that they also have cognitive issues. That is, they may find that they have poor th thought processes. They, they can't think straight. Um, also, their memory loss is there. So cognitively, they're not there yet. Um, their mathematical skills can become very dampened during an, an attack. Also, you may experience um, speech disturbances. You may have an attack, you may try to talk, however, all the words become jumbled and mumbled. You may have swallowing difficulties as well. Dizziness can come on as well. Pins and needles or numbness in your face down one half of the body, even to the point where you can become so numb that you become paralyzed on one half of the body as well. So typically, when you meet a migraine sufferer, it's not all about just the pain. Yes, the pain is horrendous. However, all the other symptoms just amplify and make the symptoms worse. Typically, the migraine attack can last up for a few hours, but will generally go up to three days on average. More as well, but on average about three days. And migraines, as you know, have a significant disability and have a huge impact on the, um, the quality of life. We see a lot of patients whereby they basically cannot sustain their work anymore. They've lost their job because of too many sick days. Their social outings, are difficult to manage. They can't go out anymore, be with their friends or the family because they have an attack. Commonly, migrant sufferers develop anxiety as well because they can't plan holidays or they can't plan what they want to do on the weekend or a given day because of the threat of a full-blown migrant attack that may occur on that day as well. So you can see how debilitating migraine is. And if you don't suffer from a migraine, then you wouldn't really appreciate or understand how it affects you. 
We also see so many people that have marital problems or relationship problems because sometimes their family members just don't really understand what they go through. It changes your life completely as well. You're just not yourself anymore and your personality and mood can change. So, let's now go over the types of migraines and there are seven different types that I will go with you today. Now, migraines can differ in terms of the type of symptoms that are experienced. Therefore, it is important to accurately assess and diagnose what type of migraine that you have. If you are correctly diagnosed, then you may have a more successful treatment with it as well. Now, there are seven types. So the first one that we'll go over with is migraine with aura. So basically an aura is a buildup of neurological symptoms that is commonly experienced as part of a migraine. Now aura will often precede a full attack and last between 20 to 30 minutes, which is again before an attack comes on. So symptoms of aura that can include are usually visual disturbances, such as dark white spots, lines, wavy colorful lines, or even temporary loss of vision. Temporary sensory changes may occur as well, such as numbness, uh, burning or prickling sensation. Changes to speech may occur, nausea or vomiting, becoming sensitive to the light, sound or smell. Changes to the sensation down one side of the body or the face. And even confusion is what can occur with migraine with aura. Now the second one um, that we can uh, talk about is migraine without aura. So, migraine without aura is when a pulsating or throbbing headache pain is experienced without the build-up of neurological symptoms prior to the attack. This is reported to occur in about 70 to 90% of migraine cases. So, 70 to 90% of migraine cases are those with migraines without aura. Now, as described earlier, pain is pulsating or throbbing in nature and will affect one side of the head or the face. These um, symptoms that can include are vomiting and nausea again, mood changes and confusion, sensitive to light, sound and smell, fatigue and diarrhea. So the differences with that migraine without aura is, is basically you will have less neurological symptoms such as less visual disturbances prior to the actual attack. The third one that we can talk about is migraine without a headache. That's right, so you can have a migraine without a headache and this is actually termed silent migraines and it, it is actually very common. Now it is for people, it is possible for people to just experience all the other associated symptoms without the migraine headache pain. Now this can still be quite disabling in and, and to suffer due to the nature of all the other symptoms. So the symptoms of the classic silent migraines can include the following. Altered vision, visual disturbances, aura symptoms, speech disturbances. You'll feel sick, you'll have nausea, you have vomiting quite a lot of the time. You can become very sensitive to light, sound or smell. So being in an office, um, staring at a computer or being under the fluorescent lights which is be very difficult for you to manage. You can have altered or absent sensations on one half of the face or the body. Fatigue, confusion, difficulty in speaking, um, difficulty to interpret things as well. Cognitive levels will be dampened, mood changes. You may also have diarrhea with it as well. So silent migraines is basically like a migraine without the pain in the head, but all the other symptoms are heightened, all the other associated symptoms are heightened. So let's now talk about the fourth one, which is called chronic migraine. So what is chronic migraine? This is for people who suffer from headaches or migraines on 15 or more days of the month over a three month period. And that is what is classified as chronic migraine. Of these attacks each month, at least eight would have to be considered as migraine, and the rest can be any other types of headache, something as simple as a headache. Now these types of headaches can be also debilitating for sufferers due to the frequency at which attacks occur. And you can imagine already, migraine on its own 
is difficult to manage. By now having more than 15 days out of the month with all these symptoms is extremely debilitating. You can't really function well uh, when you have chronic migraines. Now let's talk about the fifth um, uh, attack or migraine and that is called episodic migraine. Now episodic migraine is when a sufferer will experience headaches or migraines on less than 15 days out of the month. And these types of headaches can include uh, migraine, both with or without aura. Now, episodic and chronic migraines together have been reported to affect 14% of the world's population and 18% of women. And it affects globally in tremendous ways. So, let's now talk about the sixth migraine. And this is called migraine with brainstem aura. We call it also bazilla type migraine in technical term. Now this type of migraine is most common in children and adolescents. It is specifically is the most common in teenage girls and can be associated with the start of their menstruation. Symptoms include everything that a migraine with aura would have without the muscle weakness. Now due to where the type of headache originates from, these migraines can cause vestibular or balance symptoms as well. Now this can include vertigo, dizziness, or unsteadiness. So vertigo is basically where the external environment, the room around you, is actually spinning, whereas dizziness is the internal wooziness that you feel internally inside yourself. Also, unsteadiness is basically where you can walk, but you'll veer off to the one side because you're unstable. You may also have loss of coordination, ringing in the ears, fainting, loss of vision or even double vision, throbbing, pulsating pain on one side of the head as well. So this is basically called migraine with brainstem aura, or the technical term is bazilla type migraine. Now the last migraine top that I would like to go with you is hemiplegic migraine. Now this is sometimes a migraine um, may suffer uh, temporary, temporarily paralysis to one side of the body during a migraine attack. Now these migraines are called a hemiplegic migraine. And this weakness or paralysis can be accompanied by pins and needles or numbness down one half of the body. Now given the closeness in symptoms that is of a stroke, these migraines can actually be quite alarming and can cause considerable distress because it can mimic a stroke-like symptom. Head pain may be similar to a typical migraine with aura or it can also be absent. Symptoms of hemiplegic migraine may include also vertigo, difficulty with swallowing or speaking, weakness on one half of the body, temporary visual loss and also confusion. So, now that we've spoken about the seven types of migraine, you know, what is the cause of migraine? Now, modern research suggests that the idea of migraines being caused by an increase in blood flow to uh, the head is actually incorrect. That was the old theory. It was originally thought that, that the abnormal or excess blood flow which was causing damage and therefore migraine pain was experienced as a throbbing or pulsating type pain. Now, it has been shown that any changes to the blood vessels um, or blood flow in migraineurs is actually minimal and insignificant and is, it is actually very unlikely to be the cause of symptoms of migraine. So, central sensitization of the brainstem arising from a dysfunction in the cervical spine has actually now been proven and shown to be a contributing factor of migraines in more recent research. Now, the nerves traveling to a sensitized trigeminal uh, cervical nucleus in the brainstem itself, which is located below the brain, can actually reproduce migraine headache and all the other symptoms associated with it. This indicates that migraine is more of a neurological condition arising from the cervical spine of the neck rather than a vascular disorder. And therapy to the neck can and is proven to be successful in treatment. Hence, the 
the research is now pinpointing that the brainstem, which is once again located below the brain, goes up to the first three segments of the neck, is now the cause of migraine. And it is usually because of a dysfunction in the first three vertebrae of the neck that is now causing the brainstem to become so sensitive and that is now transmitting pain and all the other symptoms associated up and over into the head. So now that we now know what the cause is of a migraine, what can be done about it and what are the treatment options? Now, many migraine sufferers have experienced their symptoms for years or decades and usually the people that we see have tried everything from different types of therapies to a lot of high doses of medications and even surgical interventions as well. Now, despite the level of treatment that they have undergone, most sufferers still continue to live with migraines. They continue to take medications. Yes, it may alleviate or reduce the symptoms, but is it actually treating the cause of the symptoms? Now, a big reason why this is the case is because most practitioners don't attempt to identify the underlying root cause of the migraines. And at our clinic here, we um, basically use modern technology and up-to-date research to thoroughly assess to find out the underlying root cause. Now, remember, if you can identify the cause of a migraine, you can then treat it. Otherwise, if you can't find the cause, then you'll forever be taking medications to treat the symptoms as opposed to targeting the cause. Now, treatment options are, basically, the question that I may ask you first is, have you seen a headache consultant that specifically deals with headache and migraine conditions? That's the first question. If you haven't, then I would strongly urge you to seek um, a headache consultant that deals with headaches and migraines. The second thing that I would ask is, is have you had your neck thoroughly assessed to see whether or not your brainstem is the cause of your migraines? Now, if your brainstem is proven to be sensitive, hypersensitive, <laughs> I'm <laughs> 